Oh, wow. This looks like it was a real leaf that they turned into a, a brooch. I'm kind of liking that. And then again, it has that like, amber tone vintage color. That's pretty desirable. We'll put that in here for $3. I've been I ordered it a couple weeks ago, but I asked, I called and asked if I could pick it up on the weekends. Because um, they're not here, so um, if it's not in her office, then we won't be dating for it. Um, okay, because I drove really far to come here. The bow itself to see if it comes up. Oh, okay. Oh, Elizabeth Arden! There we go! That is how that works. Okay. Ooh, this one. Okay, this looks very interesting. So this is a pendant, and this looks very similar to those operculum shells. And if you guys don't know, those operculum shells are pretty collectible. You guys, I am a whole hot mess here. <laughs> um, we are here in Appleton, Wisconsin. And I have an antique store right behind me. So we're going to go in there pretty soon to look for some jewelry to resale. But I, we just left the hotel, dropped the kids off with James and Serafina at this like really awesome kids museum called Building for Kids in Appleton. Awesome. Um, we go there a few times a year. But as I'm like <laughs> dropping them off, I'm realizing I left my wedding ring, this ring, my earrings, all in the hotel room. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. Oh, so I had to go all the way back there, get them, yay, I have them. And then I was like, oh, there's the antique store across. And so I have an hour to shop. Guys, pray for me. I'm kind of a hot mess right now. We had a long night, obviously, with the kids having too much fun at the water park. Uh, and then Gideon couldn't get to sleep, and it was in a hotel room. Anyways. That's just a little piece of my life right now. Um, let's go see what we can find. And then I'm gonna go pick up some uh, auction lots that I won from shopgoodwill.com. And then we're gonna pick it up in Appleton. So let's go on inside. <music> antique mall totally recommend it it's an antique mall and an auction house so you can win auctions oh doggy cute doggy um and they sometimes have like jewelry bins you can dig through here that i found some really great stuff and then also it's just huge it's just huge let's go see so this bin says three dollars each firm and then there's another one over here that's also three dollars each let's see if this is going to be worth my time i mean i see some really pretty things like let me see do you see those guilloche earrings right there right there those look really pretty and those would be worth the money um, there's like a little peacock right there maybe i will look through this bin so how much fun is this? What am I seeing right off the bat? This is a cow that was a brooch. If this was like a dollar, I would totally pick it up. That is really fun. Um, but where did we see, what is this? There's like a lot of crafting things in here. What's this? Ooh, this is a pretty mother of pearl thing. Maltese cross, it's a little worn but Maltese crosses do really well. Um, yeah, a lot of crafty stuff. Ooh, if this was like Monet or Trifari, I'll pick it up. So let's see what this is. This one is a Sarah Coventry. I don't know, I'll Google Lens this to see if it's worth it. Some is, this one looks like a Monet. Let's see, yep, this one's a Monet, but I don't think it's worth $3. I'll see, I'll, I'll consider. And then this one definitely looks like a genuine tortoiseshell bangle. You can't sell genuine tortoiseshell. So I'm not going to grab that. Here is that peacock. And it looks like a pendant or something. It's broken. 
broken. Um, little doggy. Mm -hmm. And we have this broken. Alright. But how much fun is this? Oh, I love this so much. And there is a lot of vintage pieces in here. So sometimes you go through like crafty type stuff and it's not vintage. Oh, Crown Triflari buckle. Yes. It's, there's a little bit of wear, but yes, I haven't seen this. It's, it's like it's like designer and designer style, like buckle, yes, like equestrian look. Um, this is really pretty. This is Jasper, carved Jasper, rose quartz. Um, this is a pendant. Looking to see if it has a spring ring. It does have the spring ring. You marked. I'll put this to the side. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's kind of mod cool. What is this? If it is Crown Trifari but broken, I will rescue it. That's for sure. That's kind of that's kind of how I roll. Like a lucite thing. Oh, this one looks like an old coral, possibly. But it's really broken. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is probably an old coral. And we have a double heart situation. We have a candle. What is this? Ooh, very boho. Artisan boho, but it's broken. Some hishi beads. A copper cuff. It does, if it says genuine copper, I would get it, but that one doesn't. Ooh, look at this. This is broken, but look at these monstrous. It looks like a pendant. That is really pretty, though. I mean, if you are live, live nearby and you need some rhinestones to fix a piece. Oh, here's like scatter pins. This looks like Sarah Coventry right here. I mean, yeah, they are Sarah Coventry. I'll put them right here, just for now. Ooh, this one. What is this? Is it a tur? What am I looking at here? I'm gonna have to get this one out. Oh, I think he's so broken. Well, whatever. Um, and that's what happens a lot in like these lots. Is a lot of them would be broken because they're all tangled together. But I do like finding, what does this say? Trifari. Mm, it's not crown Trifari, but it is pretty. I like finding brooches to sell because they're so easy to list. Here's a 1960s uh, purple enamel. If this was like mm, two or less, I would probably would get it. I just kind of want to rescue these from here, honestly. <laughs> I really do. All right, we have a Jaguar. Um, all right, I'm going to keep looking through this and then come back with anything that I find. What the? This is Avon. What is this? Is it a, sh that can't be a shoe clip. What is this? Interesting. All right, I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, I got the next spin. Here are the pieces that I think I'm gonna be getting. Um, yeah, so I can't find these matches, so I'm hoping that they're in here. And this one is Pegasus Coro. Uh, it's missing the safety chain, but I still think it will do well. This one is a puffy bow. It looks very designer. And what does it say? Dawani or something like that. I have absolutely no signal in here. Um, this one looks like a pewter, but it is signed. So, artist signed pewter fish. This one is marked Capri, which is a nice designer. This looks very Juliana. It's probably, most likely not, but I thought for $3, that one was really pretty with the colors. An alpaca Mexico abalone hairpiece. 
this one is Sarah Coventry, but it looks very high end, I think, right? Yeah, Coventry, right there. <clears throat> and then we have some charm bracelets. This one's not marked, but again, I've been doing really well with the vintage, like, track chain style, I'm sorry, tank um, track style necklaces. <clears throat> so here's another bracelet unmarked, but it's mother of pearl. It has a fold over clasp. So for $3, I think I'll grab that. And then, let's see, I'm hoping to find um, maybe those matches to the earrings. And like I said, I've been finding some decent things for $3 a piece. So I expect to find some things in here as well. Let's see, an elephant. We have, this is cool, it's an apple. That is so cool actually, I kind of like that. Um, I'm just looking at all the brooches on the back to see if any of them are marked. Here's Sarah Coventry, that one is damaged and it's pretty common. Here is a unmarked puffy flower. But if it had a C-clasp, like an old C-clasp, I would consider it, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. It's missing the clasp, but look at all these baguettes. Oh my gosh, I wanna set it to the side, that's for sure, because that one is fantastic. Um, this one feels very old. Yeah, it has this clasp here. My fingers are getting so dirty. I'm going to put this to the side. That feels very old. Um, yeah, no signal. So everything I'm just going to have to pick up based off of instinct. This one is Desert Heart, which I have sold before. I mean, this is really pretty. It's like an opal, opal opaline. I think I'll grab that one. Um, we have very modernist Sarah Coventry it is dirty I won't get that one oh baby cute oh wow this looks like it was a real leaf that they turned into a, a brooch I'm kind of liking that and then again it has that like amber tone vintage color that's pretty desirable. We'll put that in here for $3, even though it's unmarked. Okay, a puffy leaf. And does it open? It looks like it opens. Let's see if I can get it open with my chip. Oh, oh, there's perfume in there. <laughs> Let's see if it smells. Yeah, it does. It smells like old perfume. <laughs> okay. A vintage chain. Oh, that's such a pretty watch. Such a shame that people don't wear watches. Pulsar. This is so pretty. It really, really is. <sighs> oh, 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 look at this. It's a trout. Oh, and he's broken. Trout tie clip. If he wasn't broken, I would get him. That would be a really great men's gift. All right, fold over clasp. Um feels very coral or lisner. I'm gonna see if it's marked at all. But it is a chunky cuff. So I might, I'm gonna put it to the side and think about it. This is my I'm thinking about it pile. Looks like we have some genuine, well this is a genuine like marble or something. That one's not. <clears throat> oh, another charm bracelet with ballerinas and hearts. Think about that one. Ooh, a bolo? Is this a bolo? No, this is a, what is this? An artisan sun piece. I think people really like their sun and celestial type pieces, so I'll get that. All right, this looks like carved horn. See that? Like a carved antler and a stagecoach. I'll grab that because it's the genuine horn. Okay, this one says a Napier. Eh, it's just plain. Um, okay, this one is BSK. Again, not super wow. Okay, what is going on here? This is, whoa. 
this is a massive piece. <laughs> it's very layered. Um, interesting. It looks like there was something at the bottom. Someone made this from other pieces of jewelry. All right, I'll think about that. It has a lot going on. Ooh, this looks very Art Deco, and it's very broken. Um, what is this? Napier? Napier little, little tree? You guys can probably hear the Christmas music in the background. What is this? We have an owl pendant and it feels like plastic. Okay. All right, as much fun as this is one-handed, <laughs> I think I will, oh, here's a Premier Designs. I think, yeah, elephants. Uh, I think we'll get that one. Elephants are good. Premier Designs isn't like a big woohoo, but I mean, it eventually does sell, so. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna just keep digging and then show you guys what I find after. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What is this? Oh, another big giant locket thing? What? Yeah, they like, they definitely crafted this one. It's missing some things, but wow. That is a big statement locket. Lockets do well. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. Do you guys know what this is? <gasps> I have another one. And it tangles all the way in here. This is going to be worth getting untangled. You guys, do you remember what this is? I already sold the one I just got. It's missing the diamond right here, but that's okay. It will sell for $50-ish or 60 something like that. Um, I'm pretty excited. Yay. Okay, so here we are at the... Appleton Outlet, Goodwill Outlet store, and this is where you also pick up your uh, Goodwill, Shop Goodwill auctions furniture. Ooh. Um, so I'm going to just ask them here if they can get my auction for me. Hi, I'm here to pick up an auction okay. from Shop um, Goodwill. What is, do you know, when, when did you order it? I ordered it a couple weeks ago, but I asked, I called and asked if I could pick it up on the weekend. Okay. Because um, they're not here, so um, if it's not in her office, then we won't be able to do anything for it. Um, okay, because I drove is... <laughs> really far to come here. Okay. Well, hopefully they got it then for you. Okay. Um, they, they don't really communicate with us how okay. they do everything, but um, what is your... Oh my gosh, I'm so lucky, you guys, that they had it because they didn't ask my name or anything. So we have this tablet i got these really cool wall art things and then we have the jewelry here oh my gosh i'm so glad it's here so yeah you just come back here to the doors and they um come do the auction looks like there's shoes here there's, it's actually more full um at these bins than it was before usually it was pretty like empty but yeah like these i would pick up but i'm um, headed, oh, I literally thought those were teaks, <laughs> not teaks, but I'm headed to go pick up the kids and James, and then we're going to go to, uh, this one really cool historic mansion, and it's awesome during Christmas. Let me try to pick this up with one hand. Um, yeah, it's awesome during Christmas time. It's decorated so beautifully, and so I'm going to take you guys along a little bit, there and then I'm going to show you the haul that I got. Um, I'm going to try to make it there. So yeah, this is kind of what the bins look like. They have a lot more hard goods right now than I'm used to. And then look at they actually did separate the glasswares, which is really really nice. I see some carnival glass ornaments, maybe some depression glass, some pottery. So that's really nice that they do that because the Goodwill Bins by me doesn't do that. This is the, <laughs> the girls think it's a castle. Um, this is called Hearthstone Historic House. And it is Christmassy, yay! We have the fam jam.
We're back. We have a bag full of goodies and I got out of there with just a few minutes to spare to pick up my kids and family. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to show you guys some friend mail I came home to. So these are some hummingbirds that match a necklace that I have. So sweet. I forgot what the brand of the necklace is, but these are from Amy. She saw them. Let's see. It says Barlow. Oh yeah, Barlow. I have the necklace. So now I have a, a Demi Perer, which is the necklace and earrings. So thank you so much, Amy. That's awesome. And then look at what um, Jen uh, from my French, French teacher in VA, uh, she has a YouTube channel. Jen sent me these and I came home for Christmas and also had these in my P.O. box. So, oh, along with this copper cuff because she knows I love the copper and their bee earrings. I collect bee and other insect brooches and other earrings and such. And they are so, so pretty. I love how they are um, sparkling. Um, because they are set and open in the back. You guys see that? So it makes them super sparkly. And I like squealed when I opened that up too. So thank you so much, you guys. That was so, so much fun <laughs> getting little presents from my P.O. box that were not returns because I have had, whew, I've had some returns to my P.O. box. All right, let's make sure we get them. All right, so I did pay $3 per piece here and um, I'm definitely going to be making my money on each of these pieces. Now, if you guys are new to jewelry reselling, um, just be aware that your items are not going to sell quickly. If you're buying like um, costume jewelry and setting it at a decent price. Now, if you're you're selling it at the low end of the market, um, which I don't recommend if you are going to consistently resell jewelry, but if you are um, putting your, your items at the lower end of the market, they will tend to sell faster, obviously, but then um, you run the risk of continually bringing the market down on like pieces that like should not be brought down. Um, for instance, Crown Trifari. I'm really thankful that Crown Trifari and Monet and obviously the designers like Les Bernard and Miriam Haskell, those are keeping their um, value as far as costume jewelry goes. But some people <laughs> are like bringing um, fast sales. So, you know, it's bringing the market down a little bit. So uh, my, my, how I run my shop is that 
I buy things or take things out of jewelry lots to sell. Um, if I think that I have a potential buyer and I am okay waiting for that potential buyer to come even if it takes a year or two years because my cost of goods is so low and I constantly have things selling that if it doesn't sell right away, I'm okay and my business is okay. Um, so that's kind of how it works for me. So if you're just getting started, keep that in mind that, you know, you might list five things and want those to sell right away and they might not. So the best thing to do is just keep listing, keep listing, build your inventory, and then you're going to start seeing those consistent sales and put your profits back into uh, your business and keep listing, etc., etc. Okay, let's talk about this. I believe this one is an Arthur Pepper. I think I have one that either already sold or I have it still listed. Now let's take a look on the back. I don't see that it's marked anywhere on the pendant itself. It might have been marked on the necklace. I'm going to have to look into this a little bit more, but the Arthur Pepper faux stone, like faux turquoise, faux coral, tends to do pretty decently. This is like a faux, like squash blossom look, so very southwestern, but for $3.00. This was a great pickup. Again, if this is not an actual Arthur Pepper marked art, A-R-T, then I'm just going to use the keywords to sell this piece. Okay, let's get into <laughs> this massive thing. It kind of looks like a fortune cookie. <laughs> and I have big hands and this is a massive thing. So I'm, I'm assuming, um, 1980s possibly into the 90s so I've been watching a lot of Home Alone with my kids being with it being the Christmas season and so if you're watching shows uh, pay attention to the jewelry that they're wearing and that movie was released in the 90s so just take a look at what that jewelry looks like um, there's some New York um, jewelry there as well if you watch that version I think it's Home Alone 2 where, where he's in New York. So yeah, it's really interesting. And you'll get a feel for uh, where um, a jewelry piece might come from. So this one was is not marked, but so bold, interesting, shiny, dimensional statement thing. This would be nice to, if you have like a scarf or a shawl, to like kind of pin it together. This would look super nice with that. Um, this one I had to have. I knew right away that this was a Sarah Coventry, but this one is a higher end Sarah Coventry. So Sarah Coventry does this thing uh, where um, pieces are have like a name. Um, so I don't I don't know what the name is for this piece, uh, which is it has like earrings and the brooch and things, but. You, if I Google lensed it, it would be able to tell me. Let me see. Does it even say Sarah Coventry on it? Hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, it does. Um, right there on the side. Sarah Coventry right there. So I could actually just Google lens this now and see if it will tell me. So I just pull up my Google lens app. Let me show you. If you don't, if you aren't, if you are not aware, Google lens app looks like this right here. You pull it up and I'm going to search using my camera and then it will pull up. Um, there we go. Sarah Coventry Large Amber and then um, it kind of gives you some good keywords. So right there it says Autumn Haze. So that's the name. And so what you can do is you can go into eBay. Let me do that. <clears throat> and look up Sarah Coventry, Coventry Autumn Haze. 
and then it might show you so it looks like there's some earrings that doesn't that don't have the amber tone actually that looks like my that actually looks like my listing I can tell by the style of how I list things and then also it says 20% off three plus coupon let's see if it's mine <laughs> yes it is that's so funny there we go ooh la la uh, that's so funny okay so that one is mine autumn haze so now I guess I have the uh, brooch and earrings okay this is what I'm talking about this person is underselling themselves right here for 25 free shipping and they have a dummy purrer <sighs> so yeah it looks like earrings brooch earrings and brooch so now I guess I can sell it as an earrings and brooch set and I am not looking for the lowest price if I'm gonna be listing mine on four different platforms um, I'm not gonna find the lowest price on eBay and list it because I have multiple platforms that this will be seen on and uh, also people like to bundle in within any of those platforms so yeah I'll probably list this I might list this with the other ones so I might do like $29.99 uh, not with free shipping for both of them together so that's kind of how I would price it and then I obvi obviously send out best offers and if people follow your store or they see that you're a trusted seller they might um, just purchase yours even though there's a lot out there or if you have fast shi shipping um, they might purchase yours so yeah there's that one okay Next, this one is gorgeous. It kind of looks Juliana to me, but it most likely is not. Actually, Juliana feels a little bit more higher end than this. The metal here is a little bit thinner than Juliana Jewelry uses, but very, very pretty with the pinks and the red. Um, and then it does have the riveted back. And it's interesting because this brooch is more like a pin. So, hmm, got that one. I had to get all these heraldic type um, jewelry pieces in there. So it has the blue enamel and it's like crust, like very uh, royal. Oh, I didn't even see that there's letters on it. So it says pro... Eris et Pro Focus. So that, that sounds like Latin. Now, this the pin is broken. You can see how this pin was made. It um, you just put that little uh, like like a what is that? An eye. It's like a metal eye hook thing. I would go in there, you'd pinch it closed, and then the pointed part would go in here. It looks like there was actually some repair done. Like this is not original to this piece. And then you can see the soldering marks right there. So this was an, um, um, a loved enough piece where it did have a repair done, so that's a good sign. Uh, really heavy, high quality brass. I will try to repair it, otherwise it can be a pendant. And for $3, yeah, this is a nice piece. Okay, well, what is this? Oh, this is an owl, and he has green eyes, uh, like an emerald green rhinestone. And then, let's see, are you marked? He's very, like, puffy. I don't see a mark right now. These little paper things tell me that it was individually priced at one time didn't sell and so they threw it into that bin and yeah he's super cute maybe like 67 oh yes he's marked see it right there on the side what is he marked oh napier did i see that at the store so he is marked napier so that's awesome right there yay okay all right next I don't really sell stretch bracelets, but this, I just loved the colors so much. I don't know. There's something about this, the blues and the pinks, 
and it is modern like this is a modern stretch bracelet it feels very high quality the stretch is very strong so I don't know I think I would if I saw this at a store I would want it and so for three dollars I decided to grab it and I think I will wear this and probably sell it so if anybody wants this just um just email me and we can work out a, out a deal for that one okay we have this you guys saw this is the cut antler I believe horn and then a stagecoach poss possibly sterling silver unmarked but very interesting nonetheless we have this I think this one was a crown trifari yes so there we go, Trifari expansion bracelet. Uh, Trifari never called themselves Crown Trifari. They just made a crown over the logo. So I think it was Jewels by Trifari is what they the name was. But this is a brushed gold tone expansion bracelet. Uh, crown Trifari is doing so well for me. <laughs> right now so whenever I find it I'm pretty excited wow this is a heavy bow heavy heavy okay let's see it is marked let's see it's marked E A I think I don't know but I just feel like it's something <laughs> it just feels so heavy so again I I don't know if I would google lens the E A because I don't have a lot of luck Google lensing maker's marks, but I can try Google lensing the bow itself to see if it comes up. Okay. Oh, Elizabeth Arden. There we go. That is how that works. Okay. So Elizabeth Arden, $40. That is awesome. Um, Elizabeth Arden, I've sold her like soaps and perfumes before. So that is super exciting. Now we know the EA is Elizabeth Arden. I'm not sure if I have it in the Maker's Mark file on our Facebook group, but I will check. I don't know. This is, that was exciting. Yay! <laughs> uh, we have this hair barrette piece, and it look, it feels really old. Like how it's constructed. You have to like pinch this. But if I don't end up selling it, I actually wear these myself. I have cloisonne. Uh, this one I believe is Taxco Mexico, I believe. So this is more of like a nickel silver. Really pretty mother of pearl shell. Okay, we have another heraldic uh, type pendant, unmarked. But again, these do really well. This is a mother of pearl this needs to be secured it just spins but uh, maybe a knot I guess it doesn't really have to there's that one okay we have another heavy bow and this looks like the bow tie pasta <laughs> so this is a little play on a formal bow I guess where it looks like the pasta and are you marked at all oh there is a mark at the bottom and it's D-O-A-N-I or something like that. I'll look this up. Let's see. Okay, the, <laughs> I looked at it closer and it was actually Giovanni. Uh, not some whatever I was saying, but uh, the Giovanni letters were kind of smushed together. I am looking up the Giovanni bow brooch and I'm not seeing anything that looks like this. Like I feel that this is a little bit more interesting than a typical bow. Well, that one's kind of interesting though. Um, but I got this one for three and I would probably put this at... $24.99 because of how interesting and it could cater towards um, other areas besides costume jewelry it like bakers chefs um, I don't know Italian foodies things like that because it, 
it just adds a little bit extra. Okay, we have this and has that roped shaggy look that I forget who makes that. Um, anyways, this one says Capri. Oh, yay, Capri. So that is a higher designer for brooches. So that's awesome. I just sold a mushroom by Capri recently. So there's that. We have Matte Mama Elephant and Shiny Baby Elephant. And are you marked? Yes, this one is a Premier Designs. Premier Designs doesn't sell super well, but it's a pretty consistent seller. Um, I think $3 is a little bit much for Premier Designs. I'm good with like a dollar. Premier Designs for a dollar is totally good with me because it, it would usually sell around 12 to 15. But because this is, this is an elephant with their trunks up for luck, I decided to get it. So when you see an elephant and their trunks are up, People see that as a sign of good luck. Okay. Ooh, this one. Okay. This looks very interesting. So this is a pendant, and this looks very similar to those operculum shells. And if you guys don't know, those operculum shells are pretty collectible. So I did want to research this a little bit. Um when I had gotten home to see what this actually was, this purple thing. So I'm just gonna pull that up. And, okay, so I see something here. Wampum cabochon in flower setting. Wampum cabochon, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. I'm looking for that same swirl, so, oval wampum what does that mean so that's how my brain starts thinking like what is an oval wampum because um wampum i believe is a native american term so i'm gonna type in purple wampum shell let's see what that looks like when i type in purple wampum, wampum shell. So it does come from a clam, just like the perculum comes from a clam. Saltwater clam that lives in the coastal waters of the northeastern United States. Huh, interesting. So that is probably what this is. So, and then it says, what does a wampum shell mean spiritually? So purity of the agreement and represent a river. Okay. Um interesting yeah so that is kind of how I would research that a little bit more quickly instead of jumping to a conclusion that this is um, just glass or just an agate so yeah that is that is a new thing to know and then I'll research that a little bit more I think this one was a Napier right or no yes Napier I think I've sold this one before. Just classic, high quality, very wearable today, chain link bracelet. Uh, love this cocktail ring, right? <laughs> this is amazing. It is very uh, enamel flower power, but then it's an adjustable ring. Oh my gosh, I think someone would absolutely love this. Oh my gosh, like love it, very mod. Okay, so we have that. I don't remember getting this. Um, and I hope they didn't price these separately <laughs> uh, because he was counting them and they were priced separately, but it's supposed to go together like this. So I'm going to test this for sterling. I'm not sure if it is. So I don't, I don't know if I meant to get this or not, but we'll save that for the end for sterling. This one is, oh, this one is another Crown Trifari, but this one I think could go for a lot more than the other Crown Trifari uh, expansion bracelet. I'm just going to Google Lens it real quick while we're here, because I would not be surprised if that went for um, good money. So it looks like we have 96 right there. Someone has it on Ruby Lane for 45. Eh. <laughs> Let's see what eBay says. 
So we have one right here. That one ended for $89.99. Um, a lot of people don't shop on Ruby Lane, and Ruby Lane can be either really overpriced or I'm actually pretty surprised that this one is the lowest that we've seen. Oh, but it is telling me it's around 1960s. Some people just know because they have a lot of experience with like a certain brand like Trifari. So it was 78, 42% off, so they must really want it to go. Um, or they might have picked it up from an estate sale, know the people when they bought it. So that's how a lot of people can date their things. Otherwise, there are jewelry books. I have them linked below in my description that I use. Uh, my favorite currently is the Monet, as I've mentioned, because it gives you a lot of good information about dating jewelry. Okay, what else? Well, we have this massive thing, <laughs> which I was, it's not vintage, but I thought it was really interesting. Like I can see some very modern woman, very, very modern artsy woman. Okay, this is not gonna fit my big wrist, but I'm just thinking of the kind of woman who likes nicer clothes, shops at Chico's and likes artsy uh, things, like going to the art museum and yeah, this is kind of the vibe I'm getting. So for $3, got this one. I picked up this articulated um, cross, which is really interesting, right? We don't see something like this too often. It has that, oh, they're nails. They're like matte gold old nails that are bent. Well, this is very interesting. Wow, it's like an artisan piece, like an old artisan piece. So you see the nails bent. Oh, this is like very um, meaningful. Wow. Okay, that was way more interesting than I thought. But it definitely has that feeling of a Trifari piece with that matte gold, but now I know Definitely is not, but wow, this is a nice high quality piece how it's made. Okay, that was interesting. I'll have to look more into that. Then we have uh, Monet, yay. I just was listening to a video by Dawn at Hudson Vintage who said, she was saying that a lot of people think the white enamel is 60s and 70s which I do, and Monet's book um, for vintage jewelry shows the white enamel jewelry starting in the 60s, and that makes sense because that mod flower power look it, like includes a lot of the white um, enameling. But she was saying um, 50s, and I'm, I was like really confused by that because when I watch movies set in the 50s, or look at jewelry books. I don't really see that. So I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more because Dawn usually really knows what she's talking about. But for now, I'm, I think I'm still going to say 60s, especially for Monet because the book shows it's starting in the 60s. So, um, and that just makes sense for me right now. Um, I think, I don't know what this is. Is this John Deere? I don't know, but men's like stainless steel jewelry does really well for me. Uh, just probably because it's so rare to find. But this one has an extra safety feature here, which is good to see. And it does feel like a stainless steel thing. It's not engraved, which also is another plus. So this is another one I wanted to look up. Maybe I will post, you know, um, what it is up on the screen for you guys. I got grabbed that one. Okay, this is carved milk glass. Very dirty, but so fun, 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 fun. For three dollars, let's see. Are you marked at all? No, but it is a hook. Yeah, I hear that? That milk glass. Yes. This one is that leaf, which is so interesting to me because I think this is a real leaf. 
that's that has um, lacquer on it and then this yeah I mean it's in really really great condition too but isn't that pretty with that color coming through so this is the Lalique by Nina Ritchie pendant uh, which was really exciting to find this even even if it's missing the diamond most of them are online and then we have this fish I think he's pewter artisan made and the artist did carve their name in it so even if I can't figure out the name of it um, I can always say artist sign so it's K-A-F-O so I will research that first, try Google Lens, and see what that comes up with. Oh, look at this interesting, yeah, very, very interesting brooch. Love this. Um, modernist, artsy, hammered, disc, ring thing. Not marked, super fun though. Geometric. A lot of things to be said about that. What is this? <clears throat> oh, this one's the Pegasus Coral. So that's also a really good brand to look out for where it, when it has the Pegasus like horse thing, <laughs> horse Pegasus next to the Coral name. Um, and what else does it say? Oh, just a patent pending. We have this enameled brooch oh my gosh yeah very MCM looking we have oh the intaglio horse that's a reversed carve and painted horse pin this one feels like um, oh Opaline or opalite or something and then it's the desert heart made in USA maybe I'll test that for sterling as well so put that to the side and then this very much looks like gold that it might be missing a little dangle but I'm sure I have stuff but yeah I I would bet that this is something like gold that or Florenza it's like um Victorian reproduction, but it's still vintage. So there's that. And we have, ooh, look at this. Another metal, enamel on metal with the rhinestones and pansies, and it's marked GWS. Not sure what that is. We have the bar brooch. Kind of talked about this um, at the antique store I believe but I think that's a genuine pearl and then we have the cat he looks very laurel birch <laughs> little wooden um, painted cat I wouldn't be surprised if he was these are all genuine pearls so I need to figure out what this is and these um these beads here are dented and you know what that tells me that these might be actual like gold because I've had gold earrings like genuine 14 karat gold earrings that have dented like this because um, they use you know it's they uh, are hollow and it's like a thin gold so I want to test that I'm pretty sure that that might be what it is uh, just based off of my experience. So that was interesting. And then we have this Sweet Romance USA Pansy Enameled lo uh, Book Locket. And lockets do really well. And then we have another bar brooch. This one definitely looks older. Prong set rhinestones, brass. Uh, it has this older clasp here. Those That one will be popular, I think. We have this gold tone. This also could be a unisex necklace with the fold over clasp. 
Um, this one has the Mother of Pearl fold-over clasp and a safety chain. Really pretty with the Mother of Pearl, like high quality. Mother of Pearl, lovely. We have this Sarah Coventry. Again, I don't pick up all Sarah Coventry for $3, but this one is really fun. I think this one might be 60s, if I had to guess. Uh, gold tone and textured. It's like a door knocker. So I'll look that one up. We got some charm bracelets. So looks like Caesar's Palace and is this like a Las Vegas maybe? Let's see. Um, Stardust, Desert in... Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I've only been to Las Vegas once. Sahara. Are these like hotels? Las Vegas. Hacienda, Nevada. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, maybe a Las Vegas charm bracelet. Charm bracelets do well. Then we have a enameled like cowboy, cowgirl charm bracelet and then we have an Elvis charm bracelet what does it say 77 so 1977 it says love me tender and then there's Elvis this feels like an aluminum like lighter weight bracelet like West Germany you know you know what I'm talking about <laughs> West Germany uses really lightweight metal but yeah definitely Elvis here my my Pemberley sneaking downstairs. Here's from the little leak. Hold on. What baby? Okay, we have this brooch. Oh look at how beautiful this is. Again, it looks very Juliana, but it has the dog tooth right here, prongs, which the dog tooth prongs are very scaparelli. So I'm not sure if it's either of those or anything but I mean if anything it's that era and it it is open in the back so you can see that beautiful rhinestone oh it's so pretty this is a lovely piece okay we have another um charm bracelet and this one was the ballerinas with the hearts so that could be meaningful for somebody and then look at this beautiful thing. Oh, these are like bezel set. I don't know. These might be topaz or something. But we'll test it. If it's just glass, that's fine. But this bezel set like look is just really desirable. Yeah, that one feels very high quality. And then the last thing here is this. And it looks very made in Austria to me. It's missing rhinestones, but I'm hoping I can fix this because I love it. I love the AB coated rhinestones. I love the coloring. I love that it looks Austrian and I would not be surprised if it's Austrian. It doesn't say. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we, we got him because we're gonna rescue him or her, whatever. <laughs> Don't we love it though? And very old. Yeah, nice construction. So there's that. All right, let me test a few of these things and then I'm going to say goodbye. Okay, so the only thing that tested as sterling was the Desert Rose here, which is good. Uh, this did not, I did not think it would, did not. And then unfortunately, this one did not either. This might have been a mistake just all together. This right here though is called a donut, which is fun, it's a stone. And then this did turn out to be John Deere. There's not a lot of John Deere uh, jewelry out there. So that's awesome because John Deere is very collectible and there's uh, not a lot of stainless steel men's jewelry. I think there's something on Mercari for like $68, $78 uh, by Danbury Mint. So, yay. I'm excited to 
list that as well. I think that one will do well. But yeah, if you like this video and you learned something, make sure to give it a thumbs up as always. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And then I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you're out there thrifting so you guys can live generously. And yeah, bye guys. I want to take a moment to give a huge thank you to all the Patreon members. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me that you guys want to support this channel. And if you guys saw anything from the video that you want to buy, you can go to lilyworksreseller.com, click on the jewelry collection on the website, and you can purchase things that you had seen right from the video. Also, if you want to see what I use for my business, you can click on the description below my YouTube videos. And as always, you can click on this link to check out more videos from the channel. And also be sure to subscribe. Bye guys.